every day they redefine the word extreme by going up it, down it, and over it. Their dream, conquer the earth. Today, we go with them. Working in the city is one thing. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work. Being at the Velodrome gives us another chance to, like, show our talent out there, too. After that, we find out what it takes to be an elite bike messenger in New York City, where cycling gets pushed to the next level. And then we introduce you to Kevin Bolger and the Puma New York Bike Messenger team. In 2004, I had a meeting with Puma North America, and uh, we came up with the idea of Team Puma, which would be New York City's uh, strongest messengers working together, you know, as a team. And enjoy the BMX and mountain bike course they have set up, utilizing a lot of the same skills you would need to be a good bike messenger. Meet Squid, New York's hardest working professional athlete. My real name's Kevin Bolger. I've been riding as a bike messenger in New York for 14 years now, and uh, Kevin's a pretty common name in New York. My first messenger job, I filled out the application, and I gave it to the dispatcher, and he, and he said, we already got two Kevins working here, so you, get, you can't be Kevin. And he asked me if I had any nicknames, you know, and, and uh, when I was younger, I worked in a bar in Long Beach, and this guy called me Squid for no particular reason, so that was it, you know? It's, it's like every New York messenger has a nickname. It's like being a superhero or something, having a secret identity or something like that. It's kind of fun, because, you know, you, you won't hear people yelling Kevin when you're walking down the street, but you, my homeboys will be like, yo, Squid, you know? And that's like, it's kind of like you know they're talking to you, you know? It's a great feeling when you're when you're uh, the fastest thing going in New York City, you know? It's like, you can, you can go from 59th Street to the Battery in less than 15 minutes on a bicycle, you know? The only way faster is in a helicopter, you know? So you do feel good, that good, when you're out here. My dispatcher kid, we've known each other for a long time, and it's almost like we got a psychic connection, you know? When I'm dropping a package on uh, 34th Street, he's calling me, giving me a pickup one block away, you know? So it's like, it's kind of like this chess chess game, you know? He's the chess player, he's got all the pieces, and I'm out there, I'm, I'm, I'm one of his uh, rooks or bishops or something like that, you know? It's taking care of business. Yeah, it's like a chess game. So you're gonna use, you're gonna use your pawns, you're gonna use your rooks, and, and try to get that checkmate. It's all about everything working together right, and locking up your bike fast, and like it all kind of falls into place. So after you do it for a while, it, it kind of comes like a second nature, you know? And like, I feel like a professional, so it's good enough for me, you know? I think it's kind of a New York thing to have the, the brakeless track bike. It gives you this kind of like Jedi kind of feeling when you do make it happen, and you, and you realize, oh, I can stop it, you know? It's like, it's like this feeling when you get on a bike for the first time like this, you're like, I can't stop that thing, or, you know? But once you get it, it's like, wow, you know, you're there. You have to be ready for anything at any time. That's what I always think. It's like, I got to be prepared for anything to come from any direction at any time. I'm looking up, I'm looking down, everywhere, you know? It's like, if you're aware, then, then uh, you're a lot better chance of you being safe, you know? While being a messenger is fun, it is also one of the most dangerous professions in the city. Monster Track 2006. This is Bronx John. This is Wild Bill. Old school in there. A lot of messengers come through. We're an old slip in Front Street, New York City, 2006. Monster Track. Even though I lost my friend doing it, I would never consider stop doing it. You know, because this is it makes me who I am. You know, I'm, and I'm really proud of it. You know, like I lost my friend John, and, and it makes me sad. You know, I'm gonna honor him, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna remember him when I ride. I'm, I'm gonna keep riding. You know, for sure. Squid has been the driving force in bringing together the New York City bike messenger community. He began organizing underground races known as Alley Cats. The races are designed to simulate the specific problems that bike messengers encounter on a regular basis. I've raced in Tokyo Alley Cats. I've, I've raced in uh, 
Kyoto, I'm going to Australia in a month. It's like, I've been all over. I've, I've raced in, in every major city in the US and Canada. His recent passion has turned to velodrome racing. With the help of Puma, he has created the Velo City Tour. Three stops this year, Chicago, LA, and Queens, New York. Working in the city is one thing. It's a lot of fun, it's a lot of hard work, but it, being at the velodrome gives us another chance to like exercise and, and like show our talent out there too. John Campo, a union carpenter slash novelist, has been the director of the Casino Velodrome since 1999. The track was built for the 1964 Olympic trials. He welcomed the messenger community out there, and he really made it work for us out there. A lot of people at the track, when they saw us coming, they were a little standoffish because we looked a little crazy, you know, and our bikes are all beat up and stuff. A lot of people at race at the track, you know, they, they thought, you know, we might be trying to take their bikes or something, you know? But Campo is the kind of guy who, like, he was the bridge, you know, between us and, like, the, the track scene that was there at the time. And now it's kind of like everybody knows each other, so it's a, it's a bigger family. Thanks mostly to Squid and his efforts, there is an opportunity to be had for the bike messenger community of New York City. One person by themselves getting sponsored is, uh, it only works if you win. But when you have a team and you do what we're doing, you organize events and you invite other people out, it's like we're saying it's not all about winning, you know? It's like we're out here exercising and riding our bikes, but we're also trying to make a positive impact and get more people on their bikes. I'm really proud of him because now it's not just about messengery. And now he got a lot of followers, and, and I'm glad that he's blessed to be able to, you know, organize something like that. It's not just a nine to five job that barely pays the bills, you know? Now it's, it's, uh, it's growing, you know? It's, it's a sport, and people look at us and they don't say, oh yeah, that's just a messenger. They say, oh yeah, that's a messenger, you know? Word. Give me a baseline.